Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for part two. Last week I went into the physiology of peptides, what they are, cytokines, fibroblasts, and how they all coexist and live happily together, and also what happens in aging. And so now that we've got that foundation, which I will also link at the end of this video, if you haven't seen it, you can click on it when this video ends, and I'll link it down below. Today we're talking about PRP, PRF, platelets. Going back to cytokines, these are the peptides that are part of the immune response and also kind of like the soldiers distributed throughout the entire body and practically all the cells of the body, just making sure that everything is doing fine. Platelets also have a lot of cytokines. They have growth factors. Platelets are part of the immune system. And when you have an, a dermal injury, they come and they aggregate. Once they get activated, they aggregate to stop bleeding. They are the first responders to stop active bleeding. And when they get activated, they release a whole bunch of healing mechanisms or healing peptides to start the cascade of reversing the injury. So they work to create new blood vessels, to rebuild collagen and elastin, to close the wound, to create new cells, and to basically heal the skin. PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma, and the way it's obtained is through a normal, typical blood draw. Uh, blood is drawn into a tube, which is then spun down, and so the heavy red blood cells settle to the bottom, and there's a buffy coat in the tube that should have, a, if it's spun correctly, it should have a concentration that's six to eight times higher than the concentration of platelets floating around in your bloodstream. And those platelets, when they get activated, will release growth factors and interleukins and cytokines. In other words, a whole bunch of peptides that are going to promote healing. As I mentioned in the previous video, our fibroblasts get a little bit senescent or lazy as we age. And in the same or similar fashion as we age, our platelets have less of these cytokines, are less active, less responsive, and the response is just not as awesome as it is in teenagers and children. So the older we are, if we do a treatment like PRP or PRF, we're not gonna get quite the same hit of cytokines and growth factors and healing peptides as someone who is in their 30s or in their 20s or in their teens. So that's something to keep in mind. You, it's always going to be more. It's always going to be about six to seven times what the normal concentration in your bloodstream is, but it will be less than someone who's a lot younger. You may have also heard of PRF or platelet-rich fibrin, and that is spun down slower. The concept is the same. It's a blood draw into a tube, which is then spun down, but much more slowly. And now the thought behind PRF, what I've heard people who really love it, is that it releases these cytokines and peptides and growth factors slowly over time. When a PRF is used, it's partially clotted. It's more of a gelatinous substance. That's why the injector has about 10 minutes to use it before it gets really difficult to use. And the idea is that it's a slower release of the peptides, the healing peptides. For me, I prefer PRP because I know if, if the tube is spun faster, I'm really gonna get a lot more platelets. And I would rather get, since I'm drawing the blood and putting the patient through the the ordeal of having a blood draw because a lot of people don't like needles. Um, I want to get the maximum platelets that I can and six to eight times is what I'll get with PRP. If it's spun down slower, you're gonna get less platelets. So for me personally, I prefer PRP. Just to reiterate, PRP and PRF are using natural peptides and growth factors from your body put back into your body. So that's why I always say this is a great treatment for people who want to anti-age but choose the most natural treatments available. I hope this gives you a really good understanding of peptides, growth factors, and all the treatments we do. Oh, I didn't mention microneedling. So 
The only reason I want to mention microneedling is because microneedling does cause this trauma to the skin. So our skin has to start the healing process. And then if we apply PRP topically, then it basically helps the skin heal quicker. The redness goes away more quickly and our skin just heals more quickly and feels comfortable more quickly and we get much better healing results. The one thing I will say is I think that if doing PRP, microneedling is better if it's set to a less, a more superficial setting because the way I think of it is if the channels, you have 3 million channels in your face, if those channels are bleeding, how is anything going to absorb in? They're going to bleed and then they're going to cl clot and close shut. So if the microneedles don't go as deep, they actually create channels that are just open. And that way, when you apply the topical PRP, it has a place to sink in and to go. In summary, the purpose of PRP and PRF therapy is to take the healing mechanisms in the body, all the those peptide communicators, growth factors, and concentrate them into a very powerful dose and then apply that to the skin after it's sustained some sort of injury like microneedling therapy and elicit a healing response much more quickly. Um, next time we're talking about exosomes. So I hope you enjoyed this. Drop any questions if you have any, and I'll see you next time.